Yeah. I'm the highest bidder on that, 2200 I think I might have just won it. $2,000. I just bought a supercharged Land Rover, Range Rover, 4x4, beater for two grand. And we are going to beat the heck out of this thing in today's video. Those things, Brembo brakes, supercharged, V8, air suspension. That one's rough. That was a repo and it is in rough shape. We're going to go check it out. And then after that, we are just going to beat the heck out of it and do a good old fashioned whistling diesel type durability test. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Let's go check out this turd. Welcome to Flying Wheels. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels and today is my most favorite day of the week. Today is auction day. I love coming to dealer only auctions. I have a dealer's license. So I get access to come to the auction. I buy cars to fix, clean, sell, and run the business. In between time, I make YouTube videos and I have fun making YouTube videos. All right, here she is, a 2014 Range Rover. Nope, wait a minute, that's not it. That is far too nice. That's not what I bought. And I'm always on the hunt for something that's gonna make me smile. And auction day is, like Forrest Gump's mama says, you never know what you're gonna get. I might just come up with something on a whim, find a car that's just too cheap to pass up, which is what happened today. I bought a 2011 supercharged Range Rover and it is rough and I got it from the repo lane and to be quite honest with you just like Ferraris and Porsches a cheap Land Rover is probably the most expensive Land Rover we're walking over to it right now we're gonna go check it out there she is right there in the repo lane now like I just said a cheap Land Rover is an expensive Land Rover. Why? Because maintenance is expensive. These are very maintenance heavy vehicles. And a lot of times, like if this was in the repo lane, chances are somebody with bad credit bought it because they wanted a ball. They couldn't afford the maintenance and they just neglected it and neglected it and neglected it until they couldn't neglect it anymore. And then after that, they say, forget it. I'm not making these payments. The bank can take it back. And then the bank takes it back and they're not in the business of selling cars. So they just run it through the auction, which is when it ends up on this video right here. Without further ado, here she is right here. It's a 2011 Range Rover rover with 118,000 miles. This bent winch light setup kind of grabbed my eyes and I've had these in good shape and they were actually like a delight to own. When they're taken care of, they're amazing cars. I mean, this is the car that the queen gets driven around in. So in 2011, this is the high-end car that the queen would have been toted around London in. And it is the equivalent of like an AMG G-Wagon, like a G63. This is the British version of that car. It is dressed to the nines and every luxury and performance option that they can add and throw at it, including terrain options, adjustable suspension, push to start, obviously heated perforated leather with armrests, 20 inch wheels, light guards, plastic light guards. Like I have said many of times, a 4.6 liter supercharged V8. I was hoping she'd purr like a kitten, but she does not. She runs like a rough pig in excrement. This thing is misfiring like crazy. We have a check engine light on, a fuel light, a like, I don't know, restricted perform. Oh, it, that's why it wouldn't rev. A diamond, another diamond. Wait, those aren't diamonds, those are triangles. But we have cold, I mean hot AC at least. Not look at this car before bidding. It was running through the lane and that's why I bought it. Oh man, suspension fault. We're gonna have to go through this thing a little bit and tweak it before we just abuse the heck out of it. All right, we have reverse, that's good. We have drive, that is also good. All right, my oldest son is 13 and he likes making these videos with me and he's kind of a car buff and we like watching Sea boys and we like watching Whistle and Diesel together. Those are like our Thursday night, lay in bed together before he goes to sleep and watch shows. I love doing that stuff with him and he loves it too. So the fact that I get to do these things on YouTube just like them is pretty amazing. And I'm gonna try to maybe make a video with him, Whistle and Diesel style, Sea boy style, where we're just gonna see how much the single toe, see how hard we can hammer this thing. Can we get air with it? What kind of fun can we have with this beater car right here? All right, let's get this pig home. All right, it's the end of the auction day. Let's hope this beauty starts up. Again. Low battery. He started engine. Oh, it started and it died. Come on, baby. All right, we're moving right along. Let's go over some speed bumps. Oh, it doesn't even get out of its own way right now. Reduced power, low fuel, check engine light. I don't know how much fun we're gonna be able to have with this. Let's get it back to the shop. We'll figure it out, and then we're gonna abuse this thing. Papa Al already got my ramps out for me. Let's see if I can make it up in one trip. Will this thing even make it up? I hope so. We're great. Look at this, now that it's up in the air, it looks good. 
Now, Orla exhaust, which I would have revved for you had it been able to rev. We have PIAA or PIA reverse lights. We have a tow ball here with, what is this? Oh, this is the easy hookup. That right there is probably worth a ton of money. So it's kind of neat. These are equipped with a factory tow hitch, which is up here. And then this is like the receiver. So it hooks in to the factory tow hitch. Really, really neat and expensive. With that in mind, I paid 2,000 plus auction fees. I'm in here for like 22, 20. These wheels have decent tires on them. I can clean those up. Supercharger? What is a Land Rover supercharger? Land Rover Brembo brakes work. What's leather interior for a Range Rover work? This car is worth more than 2,200 in parts alone. So I think we can have a really good time with this and possibly make money at the end just by parting it out. I mean, look at this leather interior, these back seats. Headrest DVD players. We do have a rip in the driver's seat though. And then one in the passenger as well. The next day. We already came into our first problem with this Range Rover. So if I start it, it has a dead battery, number one. Second of all, emergency brake will not unlock. I actually don't know whether I push it or pull it because it's not a manual emergency brake, it's electronic. Park brake fault and will not allow this thing forward. Trailer. All right, so we're gonna have to go to the good old-fashioned uh, owner's manual. Electronic parking brake. Do not rely on the parking brake to hold the vehicle. The parking brake operates on the rear wheels. Secure the parking and make sure it's dependent. It may not be dependent based on hard or stable surfaces. Do not rely on the parking brake to operate effectively. Cool. Now we can just go through it and see how to release this thing manually. All right, releasing the EPB emergency parking brake manually with the ignition turned on. Press the brake pedal and press down on the EPB lever. This will release the electronic parking brake. Well, that seems to me electronic. How do I actually do it manually, even though this says manual? So push the electronic button manually? That doesn't even make sense. Just going back and forth, I kind of, it's still engaged, but just not as much. Yeah, it's still hooked up, but I think we got it off the screen. Lemon right here. We got, what is that? Why is that grill, push plate, whatever, diagonal? Has a winch on it, bald tires, barely running off a jump, and the emergency brake is stuck on so the thing barely moves. Well, since we can't get this thing to move because the emergency brake, electronic emergency brake is stuck, let's see if we can free it up. We're just gonna spray some penetrating oil in there and try to, at the very least, lubricate the brakes so they don't grab anymore and they roll we will find out in just a second so we no longer will have any rear brakes let's get all the lights on in the dash parking brake brake light check engine light exclamation mark exclamation mark and tons of messages telling us what is going on none of it actually telling us what's going on all of it just warning us maybe we should move the escalade convertible all right good the lubricant worked on the brakes now it is no longer braking it is broken not braking whatever all right, now if my memory serves me correctly, that Range Rover has the same bolt pattern as a Ford F-150. And I'm sure back here somewhere, I have a set of junk wheels for a Ford F-150. I don't want to ruin a set of 20 inch wheels. If I can find a set to throw on that thing that are a little more rugged and off-road, like these right here, I think that's off an F-150, 20 inch, probably Chevy. And we can throw them on that and really kind of put this thing to the test off-road. We have some Mustang wheels. We have some Wrangler wheels, which might work. I guess I should Google what fits first. We have more Wrangler wheels, more Wrangler wheels, more Wrangler wheels. What are these? They have no tread. Steel wheels. These might work too. I don't know what these came off of. A few minutes later. All right, that Range Rover has some issues. So that isn't like plug my little quickie scan tool in it. This is some serious deep diagnosis. So we're gonna plug it in and I actually have, so like, let me open my tool chest of OBD scanners. I have a bunch of portable ones. This was like my big expensive one. When I started my dealership, you see all the ports and everything. This actually does everything this one does, but it's a fraction of the size. So you'll see like this was extremely versatile. It was really useful and helpful and it was very expensive. It is now actually obsolete and out of date because I bought it so long ago. Get up with the times. This one does everything that one does and more and it's light and handheld. Let's go check out what's up with this Range Rover. Goodness, the battery's not even dead. Cool. All right, maybe I don't even need my jump pack. Let's see if it starts. It's keyless, so push to start. 
fan works. Parking brake off, lift switch to apply. Go and park, oh look at this whole thing, what a mess. All right, so let's break out my handy dandy Boscom scan tool. Very versatile, super lightweight as I just said. Handheld. Now I actually like this thing because it's not a touch screen. Like the touch screens, I end up pushing the wrong buttons all the time and it gets pretty annoying. Now any car after 1996 has OBD2 emissions, meaning there is an OBD2 port somewhere. There is right there. And I plugged it in, right? Wow, the first try that never happens. So I'm gonna take my connector, plug it into my boss comp right there. Screw those on tight. Vehicle's battery powers this on. Now this actually is battery powered. It has an internal battery. I haven't charged it yet. You can actually plug it in right here or use the vehicle's battery to power this on as well. So we're gonna diagnose this car right here. It is European. We're gonna go over to Land Rover. Automatic selection. The VIN is being read from this vehicle. 2011 Land Rover Range Rover Sport. Supercharged petrol. So gas engine. Supercharged 5 liter V8. Let's just do a quick test. It's gonna scan through the entire car check for all the faults entire oh it's just going to keep going fault fault oh my goodness look at all of these faults. it's just going to keep going fault 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 oh well something's okay the dynamic response module fault 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 not equipped fault 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 holy moly all right so we're at 48 percent. we're just going to let this thing run through and then we're going to check all the faults on this car 12 seconds later all right here we go 100 percent. this actually was pretty quick typically like my other scan tool i was showing you is five to ten minutes so i'd pay a mechanic to just sit here staring at a screen for five to ten minutes while it does a quick test this ran right through in under 60 seconds uh we have lots of faults it just keeps going oh geez so let's do a report how do we do a report just keep going down exit report Okay, we have eight ECM electronic control module codes, one transmission control module, seven ABS braking system, nine, nine airbag codes, 24 instrument cluster controls, two ride level control codes, a steering angle sensor, adaptive dampening control module, and a dynamic response module. We're gonna escape this. So I can go to report and print these off on my computer, that way I have them saved. Now I'm going to go back and I'm actually just gonna quick erase this because I wanna see what codes actually come back. So I'm gonna delete everything out of the memory, then we're gonna start the car and try to drive it, and we can come back and see what codes reappeared in the system. A few moments later. Now we've saved and recorded the original faults. We've actually cleared everything out, driven the car, and we're back running a system test again. We did a quick test one more time, and you can see how many other things have been repaired. So one light might have triggered an X, which might have triggered a next fault. This car has been sitting for a really, really long time too. And it looks like we have an altering control module fault, a uh, seatbelt fault, Parking assist fault. So the Boscom IF745 has a seven inch screen. It's also Wi-Fi capable. You can also do system updates with it so it doesn't go obsolete. It's a significant level above those handheld scanners that you've seen me use in the past. I'm gonna read some of the specs because I don't wanna miss anything. The IF745 diagnostic scan tool provides OE, original equipment level, full system, in-depth OBD2 scanner diagnostics, including engine, transmission, HVAC, ABS, airbag, ESP, TPMS, gateway steering, radio suspension, BMS, and all opened electronic control modules. So you saw all those things when I was scanning it with my quick scan. It even does TPMS sensors, which is really great. This is an easy way to maintain your vehicle for yourself. You can reset your oil service light, perform throttle relearns. You can bleed your ABS system with it, EPB resets, and you can even calibrate your steering angle sensor with this tool. The good thing about this one is it's just, it's user friendly. There's not a lot you need to know, or like you, if you don't know how to use things, it's pretty simple to work. The portability of it, you keep seeing me move it around like this. My other scan tool, the big giant one that does less than this one does is heavy and just uncomfortable to use. I have been swinging this thing around the whole video. So there is a link in my description with the coupon code if you wanna try this for yourself. If you are a DIYer, probably something you should have in your toolkit. Thanks Bosscom for, you know, just helping us out and try it out for yourself. Things up in the air, let's check it out. What did you end up doing to free up that brake? <laughs> Put the brakes out. Took the parking brakes out? Why, were they just frozen? They're not normal mechanical. Yeah. So they are electronic, but there is a cable that goes to it. Mm-hmm. And that cable runs up into that big box right up in there. Yeah, right in there, okay. 
So and that's, that's the, probably the squealing we heard? So, yeah, that's something up with that thing, and that's yeah. in the center of the car. I wonder if the bags are still holding air. Not at the moment. But Not at the moment. Oh, do we need to shut it off before it goes up in the air, do you think? Sometimes it's a switch, like in the trunk or something, where you can program it through the dash to shut off the suspension so it doesn't keep running or it doesn't blow the bags. Yeah. I don't know. We will find ah, the battery is dead. Now check out this Borla exhaust. We have twin tip exhaust that goes to Borla mufflers on both sides that goes straight back to a larger Borla right here, all the way up straight pipes, all the way up to the two cats. So we have true dual exhaust to an H pipe in the middle. And just like, you know, actually it's drier than I would expect a Land Rover to be underneath. Tires, not so good. Now I had mentioned we might put some Ford wheels or Jeep Wrangler wheels, eh, wrong. Car tires, car wheels. Chevy Camaro, Chevy Corvette, BMW, Acura. That's what fits on this. No truck wheels. So we're out of luck with throwing some F-150 wheels on it. Back to the drawing board and we keep going. Thanks, Dave. All right, eight spark plugs and eight ignition coils later. Dave has this thing put back together and he's thinking, I'm hoping, He's also hoping that we don't have any misfires and this thing runs right. You wanna fire it up? Yep. I wonder if it has anything to do with low voltage. I mean, this is a finicky car too, and that battery is junk. So we should probably get a new battery for it as well. Yeah. We'll try it. I'm feeling pretty good about it. I'm actually not feeling pretty good about it. I'm trying to be positive. And the suspension's holding on every side, but this one we all am noticing now. That sounds good. It didn't start up like that before. Never mind. I take it back. It sounds better, but it doesn't sound good. Give it some gas. Will it let you give it gas? It's already better than what it was. It wasn't letting us do that. Oh, you're on the floor right now? Hmm. Restricted performance. Several months later. Hey, fast forward to spring. That car has been sitting all winter. I made videos about the projects that I have sitting around. The Impala SS with a 5.3 liter V8. This thing that I wanted to do like a whistling diesel. Like it had the potential if it ran right to be like that budget real off-road beater. It has a tow package in the rear, has the winch in the front, Brembo supercharged. I could have really abuse that thing it's probably honestly timing chains and stuff and i don't have the time for that so now i have a fairly new range rover that i can't do anything with like look at the suspension never dropped the tires never dropped uh tire pressure it's just engine stuff that was a really really nice car at one point and it's sadly just not anymore so i don't know what the heck i'm gonna do with it this the cayenne you can see the Celic is gone the buick is almost gone the t-bird i have an offer on a lot of this stuff i'm just like i, I have a whole, this whole series of all these lunkers that i've accumulated over time we're just liquidating all of them i just gotta get rid of all of them for cost so I, honestly i put most of them up on my website and then we're just gonna start focusing on like nice clean trucks suvs cars that run well we're gonna bring it back to the basics and like stop making silly. I'd love to say that I'm gonna stop making silly like, hey, I bought a 500 horsepower Porsche for 2,500 bucks. Yeah, you get what you deserve for buying that. I bought a $2,000 Range Rover. Yeah, you, what did you expect, Craig? You got exactly that, a $2,000 Range Rover. Yeah, cool for you guys to watch, I guess. Maybe, maybe it's not even cool for you guys to watch, but it makes no money. That Silverado will make money. That Silverado, that Ram sold. We actually made a ton of money on that. That I've had for too long. Don't buy Nissan Titans. They have rod knocks. They have like piston slap and I, I won't buy any more Nissan SUVs like the Armadas and the Titans. Terrible, terrible engines and their gas guzzlers. Mercury Milan, Toyota Highlander, Subaru Impreza, Honda Pilot. Those are things that make the money. So this entire series was about clunkers. I'm liquidating all of them and we're going back to basics. We're going back to things that make us money and we're gonna move on from there. If this video was educational or informative or entertaining or whatever, tell me in the comments and like down below because likes don't cost you anything. They're in favor to me and they really actually help boost our algorithm. And if you love anything auto related because I'm all over the place when it comes to cars, make sure to subscribe down below. I'll see you guys all later. Thanks for watching. Adios.